Perfect. Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to my, my, my presentation about the MPI portable avatar format. So uh, let me start with a short introduction to the issues that uh, the MPI portable avatar format aims to address. <clears throat> so um, say now our world, nowadays, we are getting more and more used to uh, encounter digital humans in many application, uh, which goes from uh, entertainment to video games to over different forms of virtual interaction, different scenarios. So uh, what we can define as digital human uh, uh, computer-generated avatar, which is rendered uh, in order just to try to give him a lifelike yeah. appearance. And uh, when we are dealing with these avatars uh, in a single contained system, in a single application, uh, the lack of a standard format for digital humans it, it does not pose any significant issue. Uh, however, these become uh, serious issues when we move into more complex scenarios like uh, an interoperable metaverse or distributed application uh, which is involving different platforms. And uh, here is exactly uh, where the portable uh, avatar formats comes into play. Uh, so the portable avatar format uh, uh, that I will present today uh, is a standard that tries to enable a consistent representation of avatars across different platforms. And this technical specification includes several key functionalities. Uh, so first of all, it ensures that avatars can be correctly decoded and interpreted so that they can be correctly rendered at the receiver's end uh, in the same way that the sender uh, is intended to be represented. Then uh, it also includes a, a composite AI model designed to translate text and speech of a portable avatar according to the precedences of the receiver in order to enhance the communication between them. Uh, second relevant feature is uh, the management of the personal status of the avatar. And uh, what we mean for personal status in this context is uh, a collection of information that try to add some depth to the character's digital persona, uh, like, for example, the indication of the mood uh, and of the intent of the avatar. And uh, this is also meant to convey on the nonverbal part of the communication, which is a relevant element for uh, trying to improve the uh, realist naturalness and realism uh, of interaction in virtual space. And finally, uh, PATH provides also the component to describe the audiovisual contents of the scene, uh, that is the geometric description of all the elements in the virtual environment, and also the description of the audio sources, uh, along with all their position in the environment. And this information allows for rendering of the visual information of a specialized audio in the three pretty scenes from any possible viewpoint uh, by the receiver. So here is a, a table of content uh, of PATH, where you can find detailed information about the scope, the definition of all terms used in the technical specification, uh, the normative references to MPI and other standards that are referenced in PATH. Uh, each of the link that will be available in presentation just lead to uh, one page. Uh, I can try to show here, for instance, this one. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, so each link, uh, there's a lot of detail information that can be accessed and, uh, and checked for uh, all of you who are interested in the details. Uh, then included in the links, uh, we also have a uh, a detailed description of the uh, MPI path use case, uh, which is the avatar-based video conference that we detailed in the following slide, uh, along with all the eight models and the AI workflows that it involves. And uh, finally, uh, this use case, of course, incorporates a lot of data types uh, and AI models from other MPI standards, uh, which finally ensures that the implementation of avatars in video conferencing is not only standardized uh, within this specific domain, but is also compatible with our MPI standards. <laughs> so this is a general and schematic representation uh, of a reference model of uh, avatar-based video, video conferencing system, uh, which in brief comprises uh, four key components, uh, which are designed to manage the virtual meeting, uh, which are shown in this slide. And these are the transmitting and receiving clients. Uh, the video conferencing server and uh, its virtual meeting secretary, which I will uh, describe here in details. So just going into the details uh, um, of individual subsystem, uh, 
uh, we can start with a transmitting client, uh, which is uh, basically responsible for sending to the server uh, all the packets with uh, a variety of multimedia elements, such as text, uh, speech, face descriptor, and body descriptors. At the beginning of a call, at the beginning of a conference, uh, the client initiates the exchange by sending his portable avatar to the server. Uh, this portable avatar is composed by various pieces of information uh, that together contribute to define the user identity, uh, the appearance of the avatar, and all the user preferences like uh, the preferred language. And uh, specifically, uh, this portable avatar uh, includes the avatar model uh, represents the user. And this one is defined in terms of all uh, its geometry and all the materials that characterize the model. And as I told you, uh, the preferred language uh, and uh, it also include the relevant authentication data such as speech and face object. Uh, so once this initial transfer is complete, uh, uh, then the, con the client continuously sends data packets to the server, uh, ensuring uh, uh, the transmission of uh, information about uh, the, the motion of a user uh, in order to guarantee real-time synchronization and interaction with our peers. So to create uh, the data that to be transmitted, uh, the client uh, uses some uh, capture system to capture the visual information, uh, usually from a camera. <clears throat> And this allows to create uh, body and facial descriptors for the avatar. Uh, then it uses a microphone to capture the sounds, uh, and it can also transmit text input uh, obtained from the users. As, uh, uh, as I told you before, the, there is also a virtual secretary in this system, which basically serves as an automatic assistant uh, who helps uh, in managing the meeting. At the beginning of a meeting, uh, virtual secretary collects all the customers' portable avatars uh, as they contain important information about the user's preferences and identity, uh, as well as uh, all the other visual description of the environment. During the conference, uh, virtual secretary plays an active role uh, by facilitating the interaction between the participants in the call. One of the most important functions of virtual secretary is uh, the ability to recognize and to process a participant text and voice input in order to extract uh, the, the underlying meanings uh, of, their, of their communication and also to interpret the intents of the participant. So in this way, uh, virtual secretary can use this information to produce summaries uh, which are containing the key discussion points, uh, information about all the decisions taken, all the action items that are interacted with uh, within the conference. And another important function of the virtual secretary is to compute the, the, the personal status of the participants. Uh, so as I told you before, uh, the, the personal status includes a variety of elements, such as uh, the emotional state of the user, uh, which can be inferred uh, from a variety of data like uh, the, the participant facial expression, uh, the body posture, the tone of voice uh, that is used during communication, as well as something like analyzing the level of engagement in the discussion. And uh, this personal status is then included in, uh, into the avatar descriptors. Uh, then we have the server, uh, which in this architecture plays a central role in orchestrating uh, all the beautiful interaction between the conference participants. So first of all, uh, the, the, the server is responsible for selecting a virtual environment for the conference. And uh, this virtual space provides the participant with a special context in which a meeting will take place. Uh, this environment is described by an uh, audiovisual descriptor, uh, which contains a description of all the relevant objects that are included in their environment. For instance, uh, we can include in the description of the conference table, of the chairs, uh, other objects included, and so on. And uh, the third server is also responsible for placing the avatar models around the virtual meeting table so that they can mimic the real arrangement of participants in a physical room. Okay, so um, every time a client tries to connect, uh, uh, the server selects a seat and assign uh, the seats to, to the specific client. 
And then uh, after we name it, uh, the server distributes all the participating clients, uh, a comprehensive set of information that contains uh, the audio visuals in the descriptors, uh, representation of all the avatars involved into the conference, and also the special attitude. So this information altogether uh, defines uh, the state of the shared environment. Uh, and this state, this shared state, is managed by the server in order to guarantee uh, that all participants uh, they can see a synchronized and coherent state of, uh, of a simulation. And then, in addition to that distribution, uh, the server is also responsible for uh, authenticating uh, the user for the space and face object in order to uh, ensure the security of a communication channel. And uh, finally, during the conference, uh, the server is also responsible for translating for each user uh, the text and voice input of the other participant according to their own language preferences. And this feature uh, enables basically a clear understanding of a multilingual conversation where uh, any client can speak in their own, uh, their own language and basically also help to promote inclusion in the virtual space. Uh, in addition, uh, the server also transmits all the updated packets uh, with uh, text, uh, voice input, uh, facial body descriptor of all avatars to uh, all the clients. Finally, uh, we have a receiving client, uh, which is basically offering to the user a personalized view of the virtual environment uh, in order to increase uh, the sense of permission in the environment and uh, also to facilitate uh, their engagement uh, into the virtual conference. So uh, at the start of the call, uh, the client received the, the, the audiovisual description of the virtual conference room and of all the avatars that are included in the room and are participating to the conference. Uh, the information about the placement is defined by the server, so the, the, their position, their special arrangement is uh, according to how they have been placed in the conference room by the server. And uh, this process basically ensures that all uh, participant avatars are displayed correctly in the virtual environment uh, so that user can visually recognize each of the avatar and interact with them in the correct way. During the conference, uh, the client con continuously uh, receives data from the server that are reflecting uh, the current update of the state of the virtual environment. And then uh, the client offers the participant the option of rendering the audiovisual scene from their prefer preferred perspective. So uh, this function is basically designed to meet all the possible needs or preferences of the user so that they can select their point of view of their avatar or they can also move the point of view uh, around the conference room. And so uh, it also trying to improve uh, the, the sense of agency and sense of immersion uh, of a user into the virtual environment. Uh, going to more detail, uh, this diagram <coughs> depicts uh, the architecture of a composite AEM of a client transmitter. So uh, yeah, just to be brief, uh, we have a user agent that provides input like uh, language preferences, uh, the, the, the selected avatar model uh, for the user. And then uh, all the text, uh, audio, and uh, visual data uh, that are captured from the, from the user uh, using various types of sensors. Uh, these data are then processed by various AI modules uh, in order to extract uh, the audiovisual description of the input data and uh, perform various operations like speech recognition, uh, language understanding, uh, personal status extraction. Uh, finally, uh, all these outputs uh, have been multiplexed into speech and face objects that make up uh, the portable avatar. This is uh, the diagram of the server. Uh, again, outlines, outlines the flow of data uh, from uh, user agent uh, until the output. So uh, inputs that are received, uh, such as the audiovisual scene descriptor and user preferences, uh, they undergo uh, to this process different uh, processing, which includes, uh, for instance, authentication, uh, speech translation, and so on. Uh, then 
all the processed avatars, uh, portable avatars, uh, are finally multiplexed uh, for output and to be sent to your clients. So uh, this is what basically guarantees that the avatar can be rendered accurately and consistently on the client size uh, according to their specific preferences and uh, to their specific point of view. Uh, this is the diagram of the virtual meeting secretary uh, that processes information about the portable avatars, uh, including the recognized text from speech uh, and also all the various descriptors that are included into the path. This input uh, again go through a series of processes uh, such as natural language understanding, uh, where uh, well, for personal status extraction and so on. And uh, what it does, uh, this virtual secretary, is uh, basically to, on one side, refining and on the other side, summarizing the input, uh, which is then processed by a dialogue processing module uh, that can end avatar models, uh, personal status, and text. And the final output is, uh, on one side, the summary of the conversation, and on the other side, the updated portable avatar representation, which includes all the information that are being extracted into these uh, blocks. And this is the final diagram, uh, which is showing how the receiver clients render support of the avatar. Uh, so the path uh, that is received is for the multiplexer to extract uh, the avatar ID, uh, the scene descriptor, uh, the model, the, the special attitude, and then all the body and face descriptor. And these data uh, are then used uh, for the visual angles in rendering of the entire environment. Uh, so this is an example with one portable avatar, but clearly uh, if we have more than one avatar, uh, which is present into the conference and in the virtual play space, uh, then they are all processed in the same way before uh, the final visual and uh, output uh, and audio output rendering. <clears throat> The description uh, of uh, the capabilities of the AI framework, uh, the AI for workflow, and uh, all the AI modules uh, are downloaded from uh, the MPI stores. Um, these are all described in just that format in order to ensure the interoperability integration of the various AI components. And in particular, this metadata uh, described. Uh, what the AI, AI framework can do, uh, such as the type of workflows it can manage, uh, the resources required, uh, the, the, the function of the workflow, uh, such as the series of steps or the series of processes that it can perform. And uh, for the AI module, uh, JSON metadata describes the their individual function, like the tasks that each module can perform uh, and the type of data that it can process. Uh, let me go back for a minute to the personal status extraction, uh, which is uh, in our architecture to the process, where the first level uh, involves describing attributes like uh, speech, face, and gesture, while the second level interprets all these attributes to identify emotion cognitive states. So, uh, cognitive states can also be used to inform uh, an avatar decision making process. Uh, and the emotion can reflect the active states and social attitudes, uh, which can be useful to determine its uh, interaction with, uh, with other peers. And basically, the personal status, as I told you before, uh, encapsulate all these elements. So this is a description of the flowchart for the personal status extraction, uh, which is processing various type, type of input data in order to be able to determine uh, personal status of an avatar. So starting uh, from the different selector, uh, choosing relevant objects such as text, speech, uh, face, body, and gestures, uh, then each object goes through a description phase uh, that basically is extracting specific descriptors out of this data. And uh, these descriptors are then interpreted by the respective uh, personal status module uh, in order to extract object-specific data for assessing the personal status. And then uh, we have the final step, uh, which involves a multiplexing of all this information in order to create a comprehensive personal status profile. Uh, finally, uh, personal status display, it allows its machine to synthesize a portable avatar 
based on provided text, speech, uh, the avatar model, and its personal status components. Uh, so as I told you, in our use case, uh, we use uh, several data types, uh, which are again uh, available at the link that are included uh, into this page. <clears throat> as for the avatar, uh, we use a standard representation, which is defined uh, uh, from the HNAME standard, uh, which is basically describing the body in terms of a hierarchical set of joints connected by segments. And uh, for uh, the, the, say for the reference skeleton, it also defines uh, exactly the number of joints, uh, the number of segments, and the naming. Uh, the body descriptors uh, describe the movements of the avatar as a sequence of body postures. And each of uh, these body postures is defined by the position and orientation of a hierarchy of the root and then by the rotation which is applied to each joint in the hierarchy. So uh, in this structure, the head, which is a relevant component of our virtual conferencing room, uh, it corresponds to one of the joint of the model. And so it is also treated accordingly to all of them. And this, uh, in particular, the head. So if we consider only the head, uh, then of course it will have a position and will have orientation uh, in the 3D space. And uh, uh, concerning the fashion animation, uh, in our use case and in PATH, uh, fashion animation relies on blend shape animation, uh, which basically renders the facial expression is a weighted combination of blend shapes. Uh, and each blend shape corresponds to a model, uh, which is the depicting uh, the anatomic movement uh, defined by the reactivation of a single muscle of the face. And uh, in order to rely on a standard set of blend shape of animation, uh, we define the face descriptors uh, fab using a path using a subset of uh, actions units, which are defined by the facial action policy system. And uh, facts, so the, the system, it is a standard way to encode facial expression. So here uh, you can see a list uh, of all the IUs that uh, we are considering this in the standard. This is the uh, first part of the action units, and this is uh, the remaining part of uh, action units that we're using. So this is a brief list uh, of all the elements that are included into the portable avatar format. So we have an avatar ID, uh, which is uh, an ID that is uniquely identifying the avatar. Uh, time refers to the timestamp uh, of, uh, of a data packet. Uh, then we have uh, audio visual scene descriptors, uh, which describe the environment around the avatar, uh, spatial attitude, including information about uh, position and orientation, while uh, the avatar model specifies 3D models uh, in terms of geometries and materials of the models using the GLTF format, which is uh, again a standard format and open format. Uh, then we have body descriptors and the descriptor, uh, which are the one that I just described, uh, that are used to uh, animate the body in the face of the avatar. And then we have some information about the, the, the language preferences, the speech type, uh, and speech segment, which are all related to uh, linguistic attributes of, uh, of the avatar. Uh, the text is referring uh, to the spoken or to written contact uh, by users, so in case uh, the user is typing some text. And finally, we have uh, the personal status, which encompasses the avatar's emotion states. So clearly, uh, we have a packet which uh, defines all this data type. But uh, of course, when you send a packet, you can include only one or a subset of these elements. And uh, let me conclude with uh, these slides about the future work. So we are currently developing a standard reference implementation that uh, exemplify how uh, the PATH uh, uh, ABB uh, compliant software should be built and behave. Uh, and this reference implementation can serve as a guideline for developers when they are creating their own implementation. Uh, then uh, we are also establishing a set of tests uh, that can check whether the implementation of uh, PAF ABD standard are compliant with the established specification. 
And finally, uh, one relevant point to address in the future is for sure a definition of standardized compression of avatar descriptors uh, that allows for more efficient transmission of data without loss of detail, uh, which is a thing that is particularly relevant for using uh, high quality avatars in all scenarios which are uh, bandwidth limited. So uh, here is the concluding slides, and uh, thank you for the attention. I don't know if there is someone in the audience who has a question about my presentation.